Joining me now for his first MSNBC interview, LAPD Chief Michael Moore. Chief, thank you so much for being here. Of course, the numbers were up, are up. Things were completely shut down last year. But you said that the city of Los Angeles has lost a decade of progress in beating back crime. Why is that? Well, I think that the systems of our society have all been broken down, all been uh, greatly impacted by this pandemic. We know what works in Los Angeles. We've led the country in crime reduction over this past decade. We've shown that cops count, that police matter, that community engagement is the leading aspect of crime prevention, and that crime reduction also is tiered, is tied to effective policing, identifying those that are involved in the violence, bringing them before the justice system and holding them accountable. All of that in this last year has been terribly and devastating, devastatingly impacted. We've seen uh, every part of society uh, broken down, uh, disengaged, isolated. And what we see from that is the results not only here in Los Angeles, but across the country. What we need to do moving forward is remember what works, uh, the strategies that have proven effective. Just a year and a half ago, this city hailed a 10th year of crime reduction, fewer than three homicides, 300 homicides over the course of the year, and record low since going back to the 60s to find the level of, of crime and violence that we that we experienced. So we've seen it work. We know it can work. We've got to you know, roll our sleeves up and get everyone involved in moving forward, getting back to our interventionists in the streets, getting back to us communicating, talking, seeing each other, and the community also not giving up, not stepping back, recognizing the police are here, that we're here to help and support you, that we're here in a manner that's going to bring safety to our communities, and let's all work together in that engagement. Absolutely, sir. Last year, the LAPD lost nearly 600 cops, but your budget actually ticked up 3%. Where's that money going? The, uh, the redu- there's a game often being played in policing today where they look at the dollars that are being spent rather than the physical staffing. Uh, the staffing numbers of this department were, were cut by 600 line personnel, 250 additional civilians, and yet the costs of policing went up, and that's directly tied to labor agreements and to the, the rank and file, the cost of what it means to have a, a, a professional police officer. And just as the rest of America is to have a 2 or 3% uh, cost of living raise or, or advancement in their salaries, the police, is, the police are no different. And so while we saw a 3% increase, we saw a physical headcount uh, it go down by hundreds. Now, I'm thankful that this city council and under the leadership of Mayor Garcetti has, put a, has made the investment to allow us to start hiring again, we're going to hire 740 uh, line personnel this next year. Uh, classes in our academy start here within this next month, and that's going to help us stem the tide of this attrition. Uh, what's also important is that we continue to focus on the morale of our people. Devastating impact of this 600 is about 100 of them left early because of what we believe is the state of policing where they feel uh, ridiculed, they feel unappreciated, they feel demoralized, and they've actually, a number of them, chosen to to leave the field entirely, not just go to another agency, another part of the country, but to leave the profession. We can't afford that. Policing is too important uh, for public safety. We need men and women who who come to serve here as a life of service. They meet their heart is their largest and most important aspect of them, and they that heart needs to be encouraged. And we know that the vast majority of Angelinos, as it, as they do across the country, support policing. But the rhetoric and and some of the the just harsh and mean uh, words and remarks and statements of uh, the anti police, the defund movement, has really taken a devastating impact on the morale of our people. So moving forward, we're, we want to. Ensure that our people understand that we need, we need to hold them accountable. We're going to hold them to the high standards of this profession. But we're also going to recognize and honor them for the dedicated service. And we can get back again in a, in a, in a, in a course going forward that is built on productivity. This sit, that builds on positiveness. This department has led American policing in its reforms. Uh, and we believe that whether it's the George Floyd bill or other reforms, that when you look at it, you look at where LAPD is at, We've already adopted many of those uh, those uh, provisions long ago, and that the, the carpet of policing is not even. That what you see is criticism of policing is many times isolated and in unique circumstances and not uniform to the entire profession. Good policing is going to keep our cities safe. I know activists wanted your officers to stop responding to minor traffic incidents and mental health calls. You're doing that. Is it working? 
Well, it's just in the early stages. We're re- we're diverting uh, hundreds of calls to the DD Hirsch and other mental health providers, but we need to increase that volume. We want we need to get mental health workers, uh, our psychologists, out in the field doing outreach and engagement. The dirty secret in in this country is that our mental health resources are desperately uh, out of touch with what is really needed. What we need is not just outreach and engagement 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but we also need safe places for people experiencing mental illness to receive treatment, to get get their life uh, in order and and, in a matter of a productive way. And right now, that is a 911 call to a police or firefighter. And then when something unfortunate happens because of a of a lack of training or because of just a, a terrible situation that has devolved out of control, we look to the police and hold them accountable. So here in Los Angeles, we are establishing resources of that outreach, that engagement, uh, patrols that help uh, intercede and don't require cop. Uh, and that, that's going to allow us, I believe, to stay focused on this violent increase, to stay focused on matters that, that police are best suited for and to identify these alternative services that, that allow the type of public safety that uh, Angelinos want. We recognize that seven out of 10 want and need policing, eight out of 10 support community policing. Those same numbers are asking for these alternatives and policing stands alongside them, shoulder to shoulder, asking for those resources as well.